Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us for this webinar about the Weatherhead School of Management's Global MBA programme. My name is Simon Peck, I'm an Associate Dean at the school and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the key features of the programme and why it's attractive. Clearly for uh, numbers of years uh, a lot of foreign students have come to study business and management in the United States and we're increasingly seeing that there's a demand for American students to understand more about the countries and cultures in which global companies are, are increasingly having to do business. And companies are realizing that they want talent that have had exposure to doing business in these parts of the world. So this program aims to provide students with these skills, with these capabilities, with these understandings of what it's like to live and work in different cultures. Clearly the, the world has, the slide says, gotten much smaller. And what we're seeing is that for companies that want to grow, in order to do that, they are going to have to do business in parts of the world that are growing much faster than the United States is likely to do in the near future. So we're looking to work, deal with countries like India and China, where growth rates of about 8 to 10 percent are predicted, and that's likely to be where most of the economic dynamism is coming for in the near future. So we're going to give you ex exposure on this program to uh, living and working and interacting with companies in both China and India. And it's very, very different from the typical visits to these parts of the world that maybe you can see in, in other programs. Here you're going to be studying, living, living with uh, other students in these countries. And it's a, a very, very different experience to a typical MBA program. Let's say a little bit about um, the, the, the partner schools with which you'll be working. Uh, the first semester of the program, you'll be living in Shanghai. Our partner school in Shanghai is the Tongzhi University, which is a very highly rated school in, in, in China. Uh, in Tongzhi, you'll be taking classes uh, in English, um, but with, with students from both uh, the Tongzhi University and our partner school in India, uh, Xavier, or XLRI, which is um, uh, where you'll be spending the second semester. Second semester in, in the town of Jamshed Pur uh, in the eastern side of the country. Uh, XLRI has a fantastic reputation in, in India and uh, is, is regularly ranked amongst the top five universities in, in, uh, in that country. And then the third and fourth semester you'll be spending back at the Weatherhead School of Management in Cleveland and, uh, you know, and taking advantage of the uh, internationally ranked faculty and programs that we have there. Well, let me say a little bit about the structure of the program. Each of the three partner schools will be recruiting 20 you know, selectively chosen students to form this cohort of uh, a class of 60. And you'll be spending the first three semesters of the program in this, in this class of 60 students. So not just developing uh, a, a local network like you would on many uh, domestic MBA programs, but you'll have a, a lifelong network of uh, you know, highly talented individuals like yourselves that will be uh, living and working in, uh, in India and China for top companies. The, the first semester you'll be in Shanghai, the second semester in India, and you'll return to the Weatherhead School in the third semester of the program. And then in the fourth semester, uh, you, you, you'll, stay, you'll stay with us here in Cleveland and have the opportunity to uh, select some from the range of classes that our, our, our regular MBA students uh, can, can also choose from. So the challenge is to, uh, to create this integrated seamless curriculum across uh, the three locations. And this is, this is a, a proper MBA program, so you'll be studying all of the, all of the key features of, of uh, any MBA program that, 
that, uh, that you, you're currently considering. Um, but in each of these locations, we'll also be giving you exposure to working with international diverse teams and working for, for, for companies in, uh, in, in these locations. So you'll be doing real projects uh, and getting experience to what it's like to, to work in, uh, in Indian and Chinese companies. The curriculum is, is organized into the five themes that you can see on the slide. And so that'll take us through all of the, all of the key features of an, of an MBA program across accounting, finance, marketing, leadership, organization, behavior. That concludes this brief overview and introduction to the Global MBA program. And now we'll, we'll hand it over to a panel for more information and discussions and hopefully answer the questions you may have about the program. Thank you for joining us for the panel presentation. I'm Kevin Ziegler with Weatherhead School of Management, Marketing and Communications. We have a group of leaders and graduates from the Weatherhead School of Management who are going to tell you a little bit about the experience and help you understand the value of the Global MBA program. So if I could introduce everybody, we'll start. We have again Simon Peck, Associate Dean of Graduate Programs for Weatherhead. We have Anand Raj Singh, Senior Manager of Strategic Planning at Phillips Healthcare. Um, Meenakshi Sharma, Assistant Dean of Career and Student Affairs, Weatherhead School Management, and James Domingo, President, Global Business Development at the Domingo Group. First, I'd like to ask is to Anand, what do you think the benefits are of the Global MBA program when you think of it uh, versus a traditional MBA program? For me, the traditional MBA program was pretty much a global MBA program because I came from India you know, to study in the U.S. So I already had a perspective, you know, and lived a culture in India. And it was very much new for me to come to a different country, take up a challenge, you know, in terms of people, culture, and, you know, the way they live and, uh, you know, how the education system works here. So, uh, so yes, obviously, it was a very global experience for me because I had uh, classmates from Japan, from Korea, from America, and uh, Russia. So I paid very less, you know, compared to the whole program when I look at being in one place and experiencing all the cultures. But, but there was a one shortfall what I had. I mean, when I used to talk to my classmates and all, they understood me as an individual. But when it comes to the people and perspective, what I think, most of the time the perspective was lost because they didn't, um, you know, live, uh, you know, in a culture like India or uh, experienced the lifestyle there to understand where I come from when I am actually suggesting or answering certain things. So that, that was a gap. So in the global MBA program, I think that's something what the American students would experience is going further east. I mean, if you go back to the history, you know, Americans have been survivors. You know, they have been travelers and settlers. And they have always moved from the Great Lakes to the railways, always towards the west. And with the internet boom, I think it's high time that they move towards you know, the east because that's where the cultural boom is happening. And uh, being in an organization like Philips Healthcare, uh, you know, uh, we, we always think about this uh, word, uh, you know, this uh, great statement what Peter Drucker made was that um, you know, culture eats strategy every day for breakfast. And uh, being in strategic planning role today, I mean, we see it every day. I see it every day when I deal with you know, people from all over the world. And uh, so, so, so when you talk about this global MBA, yes, this is the time. This is the right time. It's a great program. Uh, and it's, it's every semester you're going to be spending in different countries. So honestly, if I would have had that opportunity at that point of time, I would have taken it at that moment. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great time to go. A wonderful global perspective from a global company, Philips. Um, that helps us uh, with our next question. We actually wanted to talk about um, working for a multinational company, mm -hmm. Philips being a great example, what types of experiences should students expect to gain from the Global MBA mm -hmm. program? Sure. So as Simon mentioned in the introduction, all the students, are they will participate in company-based project at the three locations. So I just got back from XLRI, and they are getting ready to start their company projects from April 1st. So some of the companies uh, are local Indian companies, but at the same time, they also have companies like Timken and Cummins. So in addition to the company projects, um, XLRI has also organized for CEOs to come and talk to these students. So they'll get a perspective, they'll learn and network with them. In addition to that, for our students, we have matched them with alumni in India. And our goal is to match them with alumni in China as well. So the purpose is the alumni can act as a mentor for culture and 
career related topics and for next year this was the first year and we we were still planning so next year we are planning to do career tracks in shanghai and mumbai so where students will be exposed to uh, different companies we'll do uh, panel discussions uh, informational interviews with alumni and host a alumni reception for them to build their network that sounds great yeah um, James, if we could move on to you, if you could tell us a little bit about the Domingo Group quickly, and then, you know, you just finished your MBA program. Um, if you could tell us, how do you feel like it prepared you for work in a global business environment? Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, the Domingo Group develops business with companies that are hoping to grow their business in Asia with a particular emphasis on Japan. And I'm a graduate of the executive MBA program. After I completed my program here at Weatherhead, I was assigned to the subsidiary of a U.S. company in Japan. It was a pretty major uh, manufacturer that had a big market presence in, in the Japanese market. So I was sent over there to lead that organization as president and representative director. Looking back on that experience and having completed the executive MBA program, I don't think I could have done it uh, nearly as well, or maybe couldn't have done it at all without uh, the learnings and experiences that I uh, had here at the program. So looking back on it, I think the tools that I learned, you know, obviously the accounting, finance, marketing, operations, and so forth, very, very important and, and uh, stellar, but also the context and understanding how the pieces fit together and how they are, are used to develop and grow businesses. And uh, moreover, the confidence to do it, to go out and do something like that. In my case, moving to a country 7,000 miles away and very different in many respects from the American uh, uh, culture that I grew up in was a, was a tremendous shift and change. And I needed the confidence to know that I could manage in that environment. And, and I really had to pull on everything that I learned in the program. So that was fantastic. And uh, I, again, I don't think I could have done it nearly as well without having gone through this program. And uh, after that, I started my own company uh, about four years ago. So I've gone down the entrepreneurial path after working for a, a fairly, fairly large manufacturer for many years. And in the entrepreneurial respect, that is also something that the program prepared me very well for. I use my education every single day uh, in building a company and also helping my customers and clients out on a daily basis. Right now, I have a lot of projects going on in Asia and travel to Japan, for example, about four to six times a year. And uh, every time I go there, I'm using what I learned here at Weatherhead. So it's been a fantastic experience. And uh, really, I can't say enough about the program as far as how, how it prepared me to do this. Very interesting. Um, if we could ask you, Simon, there are three really renowned programs involved here, three schools that, that offer this global MBA, that comprise the MBA. If you could tell us about um, some of the advantages, you know, they're known for things like innovation, organizational behavior, leadership. How do those come uh, into play in this program and offer students a really top-notch education? Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, and so uh, you're quite right. I mean, uh, we're working with some tremendous partner schools in Tongji University in Shanghai and uh, XLRI in India. And, and the challenge for, for me and my colleagues is to is to design a, a curriculum that allows us to draw on the particular strengths of each program while covering all of the the basics and necessary material of an MBA. So in Shanghai, in the Tongji School has a rich history, uh, particularly in the field of operations management and research and statistics. So there it, you'll be you'll be exposed because you're there for the whole semester. You're not you're not just jetting in for a, a couple of classes, you're going to be there for the semester, and that allows you to really experience those classes. Uh, at Xavier in Jamshedpur, they have a rich history in uh, human resource management and finance, and so there you'll be taking classes that, are, that, that will expose you to the best faculty in those areas. And then at the Weatherhead School, as you said, you know, our history of, of leadership, organization, behavior, innovation, those are, those are, we'll be focusing on those classes when, when the, the cohort is, is in Cleveland. 
Excellent. So there's a lot to learn and a lot of good um, components of the program. And I wanted to ask a little bit more as we're getting to know um, Weatherhead in particular. Uh, Weatherhead's known for its new design and innovation department, um, the Fowler Center and its sustainability initiatives that go with that. Can you tell us how did some of those play into your experience and do you think those bring a lot of value? Sure, definitely. I mean, um, <clears throat> when I joined uh, the MBA, um, already the Fowler Center was in place and we had the uh, systems and design thinking classes also. Uh, some of the big um, advantage what I had in taking those classes was today in Philips, I mean, getting into the real world, um, we are dealing with medical equipments. And when we are talking about medical equipments today, uh, you know, and looking at all those 120 plus countries, um, we are taking a sustainability approach here where we are reusing many of our medical equipments through harvesting programs. So within strategic planning uh, today, you know, uh, that's one of the biggest components we have is not talking about cost savings through cutting heads in an organization, but cost savings through how we can reuse what we sell. And that doesn't only, you know, help us in overcoming certain technology obsolescence in the markets, but at the same time, we are trying to be a sustainable company because we sell big machines that have CT scans and you know, advanced molecular imaging systems. And uh, going back with design thinking, um, you know, uh, one of the co great concepts what I uh, learned from uh, you know, Fred Colopy, he was a professor, is not to think always outside the box because it doesn't help. Because sometimes you have to deal with constraints and uh, scarce resources. And you have to think inside the box. So today, uh, you know, uh, there are quite a number of challenges where we don't take, uh, you know, the outside box thinking, but we go inside the box and think within that constraint, uh, you know, as to how we can resolve a situation or get a good solution for that. So overall, I mean, um, th these are some of the ideas or pillars, uh, you know, which were uh, there in those programs which I could learn, and today I can practice them in my, uh, you know, organization in the real world. So, Very good. James, if I could ask you another question, it sounds like you've had a lot of global work experience. And what's unique about this program we've learned is students spend an entire semester both in India and China and then back in the United States. Um, how do you think this program prepares you for that experience? What's it like to work and live in a different country for that period of time? Well, it really changes your perspective. And uh, one of the things you realize when you live abroad is that you're looking through a lens uh, when you're in your home country, you don't really realize you're looking through a lens because it's your everyday life and you're dealing with the people you know and uh, a culture you understand. When you're taken out of that culture and you work in another one or live in another one, you can see that perspective and you can learn to look at things from the other perspective as well. That's a really major change and I think it's a change that the individual will undergo when they live and work or study in another culture like this. So I think the global MBA program is fantastic from that perspective in getting uh, the students to really understand and, and uh, you know, breathe the air, eat the food, uh, talk with the people, learn a bit of the language, and that brings so much understanding that just cannot be learned any other way. It's, not, it's so much different than just traveling there on a trip or a short visit. You're really living there and understanding. That's great insight. Um, I mean, actually, if I could ask you, that in this program, do you need to have work experience before you apply? What do you think a student should be prepared with before they apply? So if I look from the employer's perspective, uh, work experience will be beneficial for you. Uh, you'll be an ideal candidate for companies like Philips or Swagelock or uh, Eaton if you have few years of work experience because you have work experience plus this uh, experience in the other countries. Um, so you'll become more attractive, but at the same time, uh, I, as I mentioned, uh, I interacted with our current student recently, and I have some bright candidates who have zero work experience, but I know they'll be very successful because they have that adaptability. So they're adapting so well with these cultures, and I know for sure when they'll go for the interviews, they'll do very well. So you just named a few companies here in Northeast Ohio, and, mm -hmm. and those are great places to have relationships with Weatherhead. It sounds like, do you need to necessarily work in another country to need that global experience? Do those, com those companies you named uh, have a need for globally savvy employees? Yeah. I think so, because when I talk to these employers, they love this idea of global MBA program. Because they, um, for example, all the, these three companies have operations in Shanghai and India. So think about it. like. 
if you are getting a U.S. student with U.S. degree plus the experience of working in India and China, plus the knowledge about the culture, even if they are working in Eaton Cleveland office, they'll know how it is to interact with team in Shanghai or team in India. So I think it's very beneficial for them. Okay, I think uh, we have time for another question or two. Um, you know, if if you could help us, Simon, what do you think are uh, some of the key ingredients to the program that you think WeatherEd offers that you really aren't going to find anywhere else? Well, my, you know, my colleagues have, have done a great job of, of, of saying why we think this is, you know, an important program. It, it meets a need that we think employers are, are facing, and we're, we're helping to train you know, future talent for, for global companies. I, I you know, I, I think it's worth just a couple of features maybe that, that, that students or prospective students might be thinking about. Um, you know, we try and make life easier for you. Uh, and we know that this, this can sound quite daunting. Um, we will look after your accommodation in Shanghai and we will look after your accommodation in, in India. You do not have to go out into the streets and find your own. All of those things are taken care of. We're making life as easy as we can for you there. Um, you will obtain um, certifications from both of our partner schools as well. So if you do want to, in the future, live and work in, 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 in Asia, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have some certifications behind your name as well as the Weatherhead MBA, which I think goes a long way there. But. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're very, very bullish about this program. We think, we think we're, we're, we're ahead of the game. We think we're meeting a need. And, you know, with these, with these fantastic partners that we're working with, we think this program is going to be very, very attractive. Excellent. Well, I wanted to thank all of you for joining us and thank you uh, for tuning in with us. If you would like, you can find more information at weatherhead.case.edu.